Here we go. Let's, let's get out of here. Find a fast way out. I'm gonna go around the block. So, I just came out of um, FedEx. They got a copy print store there. Slash mail, whatever. And they, and they um, so I get, I get, um, I get these gospel tracks. I got it offline. They got a color version, but the color version only, it's not really color, it just has some yellow. So I just, uh, I just downloaded the thing and then I made a copy and then I take the copies instead of doing the whole PDF thing after that. I just take a copy and just make copies after that because it's cheaper. But this is them right here. This is what it is right here. Um, I don't know if that shows up on camera. That's what it is. Yeah. I don't know if that's... Yeah. So that's what it is. And then I take them. I take them. And I fold them. Like you would fold a letter. Fold it like this. Take it this way. Fold it in half. And then I take it this way and fold it to where the part that says God, ask God to save you in Jesus name and then I take that and I fold it in half this way like this fold it like that and then I lay them down I put them in buckets at Lowe's or I'll put them on shelves or tables at Whole Foods or Shelves at uh, Walmart or whatever. I just put them everywhere because um, I used to, and I share the gospel with people. I talk to people and share the gospel, but um, these are effective, man. You put them down, and also, you know, you'll talk to people. And on Maui, and I think in general nowadays, everyone has this. They got a, a fake Jesus. They've been taught that, that Jesus was such and such, and it's not the real Jesus. And when you talk to them, it's like beating your head against the wall, dude. So I put these down. I figure if the, there's no other person there, you put them down. They pick it up. God draws them, whatever, you know. I, 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 say, I say this when I put them down. I say, Lord, your word, you say that your word, word will not return to you void. And... Um, then I leave it up to him and you know they'll pick it up and you know maybe there's not another person there they'll pick it up and they'll uh, check it out and you know God does all the work anyways where am I going I forgot where I'm going I forgot where I'm going Put those down also online you do a video online or you put links and whatever you know and that works that works non-stop you know you can only do so much you know but if you do so put something out there then that's working non-stop you know spreading the gospel it's pretty effective dude so um yeah I figure if there's not that other person there, that they won't have so much of a wall up. It's just them, the gospel, the piece of paper with the gospel on it, and God, Holy Spirit, convicting them. You know, when when uh, when when Jesus saved me, I wasn't looking for him at all. Actually, it was a I hated Christianity. I hated it, man. Like hated it. Um, growing up. From a young age to the time Jesus saved me at like age 18, I think it was 18 going on 19, um, I was into Dungeons and Dragons, I was into um, uh, books, like high sorcery books, like uh, the Elric Saga, Saga, I was into um, just all kinds of stuff, I used to read like crazy man, and uh, Also, I was into um, like New Age stuff. I was into Wicca and, and Druidism, and I used to read these books all the time. And uh, checked out Buddhism, Native American stuff. 
because I have Cherokee Choctaw and Creek in me. Cherokee from both sides, Choctaw from my mom's side and Creek from my mom's side out of Alabama, yeah? The Cherokee from my dad's side's up north somewhere. Pennsylvania area, his dad. Um, although my dad lived in Hawaii from a young age. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, I have Japanese on my dad's side. My grandmother's Japanese. So my dad's half, I'm, a, I'm 25%. So yeah, I'm all mixed up. And um, so I was interested in the Native American stuff for that reason. Um, I'll tell you right now, there is legit supernatural stuff out there. Um, Bible calls them unclean spirits, devils, and that's what they are. But when you're not saved, you think it's something else. You know, I gotta be careful. I don't want to get this keave in my tires. You see these trees? Keave, man. See them thorns on those trees? They go right through your tire, bro. Right through your tire. So, um, oh, dude, I gotta get gas before I get this load of soil. That sucks. Maybe we'll be alright. So, um, yeah, I was into all that stuff, man. I wasn't even looking for God. I, I mean, and I've had supernatural stuff happen, man. Like stuff you wouldn't believe if I told you about it. Weather changing, lightning coming down at, at you know, when I, when I, ask for it striking like 100 yards off hitting a tree just all kinds of stuff man uh being able to change the weather from sunny into just windy rainy storm like that just by by willing it just weird and it's not me it was a it was a unclean spirits that the, the devils or fallen angels i don't know if it was fallen angels involved but Unclean spirits and devils are the disembodied spirits of the Nephilim, the giants in Genesis 6, they call them. They're the offspring of the fallen angels and human women. Also, after the flood, there was, there was Nephilim in, in the earth too as well. Um, also, the offspring of the Nephilim wasn't just between, um, you know, you started with the angels and the, and the women, the human women, and they had, they had offspring. But then though that offspring, then that offspring went off and uh, violated animals and stuff on the earth. So that's where you got like your centaurs and you know and uh, satires, you know, fawns and all this stuff. It was the Nephilim inter like doing stuff with animals and breeding. So I don't know if any angels did that because angels just says angels mixed with the women and had the, the offspring and then that offspring you know corrupted itself on the earth with all kinds of beast and everything and um they're they're the devils the unclean spirits the things that go bump in the night people call ghosts that's what they are it's those things they're disembodied spirits because they they got killed off during the flood and any of them that lived after the flood because it says they were in, in the earth in those days before and after the flood they're, they're, cruising around, they're cruising around too so yeah so I believe they'll come and attach themselves to you even a even a fallen angel might attach itself to you if you know thinks it can push push Satan's agenda through you so yeah stuff like that is real I've experienced it my whole life you can feel it I've experienced it before I got saved um, and I never had a feeling of dread from it before I got saved I always felt like it was a uh, nature spirit or something like that that was coming around and was my friend but after I got saved I could feel the evil coming from that stuff and and God would uh and, and I didn't see that I could feel the things before I got saved but I didn't see the things until after I got saved after I got saved I would see um, like a shadow a shadow shaped like a person a mis misformed person about the size of me or a human size, six foot or so, in a shadow. I'd see a shadow, silhouette of a shadow, in a shadow. There was a, like a darker, darker part of the shadow, shaped like a person in a shadow in the room. And I've seen that multiple times. One time, I saw, I saw one. I woke up from a dead sleep, and at the foot of the bed was this, and it was less of a shadow and more gray and I could see textures on this 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 um 
like entity, and it looked like they had uh, looked like they had like a wrinkly, you know, like the flight jackets, World War II flight jackets with the wrinkly. It's like the leather jackets has wrinkles in it. That's what it looked like they were wearing, but I'm not 100 percent sure. It could have been their skin or whatever skin when they were alive or whatever. And I woke up angry. Like other times when I'm awake and these things would come around, I'd, I'd be, I could feel the evil coming around and the, the fear that would come over you and then God would automatically pop into you. In Jesus' name, get out of here. And they, dude, they're gone like, like, like a blink, man. They're gone. They're out of there. This time I woke up from a dead sleep angry because I guess God put the anger in me because the thing's trying to mess with me in my sleep. Now I woke up, I seen this thing at the foot of the bed, and it, all this happens in seconds, like split seconds. I wake up angry, this thing backs up super fast, and the, the room was lit because um, the street lights. There was a corner of the room near the door where the um, there was some shadow. This thing backed up super fast to the shadow. Once it hit the shadow, it backed up slowly into the shadow, and then it was gone. And I know this stuff sounds crazy, but I'm telling you, this supernatural stuff is for real, man. I've had it happen my whole life. My mother's experienced, my grandmother's experienced, experienced this stuff. Uh, my uncle has experienced this stuff. So I don't know if we had some stuff attached to our family for generations or what, but um, yeah. I haven't had it come around for a long time now. Last time it happened was uh, 2000 seven-ish and I haven't had anything like that come around me since then and I felt I felt things you know you could feel things like coming off of people stuff like that but I never had anything manifest itself visibly to me like that again and you feel them before you see them you feel them man you feel this evil and 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 you get this fear that starts coming over you like you know you can't you're helpless against this thing except that you have Jesus Christ so yeah, I'm not nuts. <laughs> Stuff's for real. Um, it's, it's it's real. It's for real, man. And I forgot where I was going with all that, but um, yeah, I wasn't even looking for Jesus. I was into all this stuff, man, before before I got saved. And I and let me turn this off. And what happened was. What happened was back when I was um, 18, going on 19, my grandmother, my grandmother had a company before I was born, and then up to like uh, 2005, I think, or something, when she finally shut the doors on it. Uh, Polynesian Express Travel, so based on Oahu, there we used to drive. She's a travel agency, but also we did tours, Circle Island tours, Arizona Memorial tours. Um, Polynesian Cultural Center tours. Now the Polynesian Cultural Center tours, we take our people out there and Polynesian Cultural Center is Mormon owned and behind them is a, is a Mormon, the Brigham Young University in Laie on Oahu and uh, near uh, Haula and Kahuku and all that. And so we drop them off at 11 and we pick them up that night at like eight or nine. I forget now, it's been so many years. And so during the day, you know, we drop off, we go surf, go diving, whatever. Um, that's if a couple of us go out. You know, my dad would drive that tour sometimes. But I was, this time it was just me. And I drove out and uh, I went to, there's a theater over there in Laie. And, and I went to the, um, one of the stores that is near that theater complex. And I can't remember what it is now. I think it turned into a subway or something. Um, and I'm going off like 10 years ago or something trying to remember what it turned into but back in uh, 97 there's a store and I don't remember entirely what the store sold but in this store it had um, a shelf and on this shelf it had like books from the university I guess that students were trying to sell or something and there were these like um, thin magazine type books but the, the you know with a harder cover than a magazine, sort of like if you ever played Dungeons and Dragons, the old module type books. It was like that. That's what drew me in. They were like mo old module Dungeons and Dragons modules. They had this like sort of like Dungeons and Dragons artwork on them, you know, uh, penciled in whatever. 
sketched artwork, but it was of like, um, I'm trying to remember, of like a lady and some space age looking stuff. And I picked it up, I'm flipping through it, and it's talking about, you know, we're from another planet and all this. It was a Mormon religion, you know, it was a Mormon religion. And, um, so I'm checking it out. Let me make sure this phone doesn't stop on me. Okay, started it back up. The phone's been acting up when you record me, cutting out. And, um, so I picked it up and I was like, cool, this is cool stuff, you know, because I was into all that. So I take it, I'm reading it while I'm waiting for the people and it's saying I need these other books. I need a Book of Mormon and I need a, uh, I need a uh, KJV Bible and a Pearl of Great Price it kept talking about. So when I get back after the tour, the next day I go down to the bookstore, one of the bookstores in Waikiki there, and I, um, I, I get a Book of Mormon and I'm asking the lady for a KJV and then she's like, oh, you don't want that one. This, that, that one's hard to read. This NIV is more, more modern. And I didn't know at the time, you know, I didn't know. So she talked me into getting an NIV. So I got an NIV. And thank God there's enough gospel in that to get saved. So I got an NIV, and I'm reading these, this Mormon magazine stuff, and it, it would re reference uh, stuff in the Book of Mormon. So I go to the Book of Mormon, look at that, which the Book of Mormon made no, it was just idiotic. It didn't make any sense, man. And, but every time it would put me over to the Bible, I'm reading the Bible, even the NIV, and it's like, oh, this is, this is, um, yeah, I can, this is, makes sense, and I'm reading it. And, I, and God gives you understanding. He was working on me. And it, it got to the point over the course of hours because I, I was reading Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, uh, and into Acts. And it got to the point during these hours of this that I was, I stopped looking into the Book of Mormon when it were referenced. And I stopped looking at that magazine thing, talking about we're you know, from other planets and all that junk. And I just was reading the Bible. And I'm reading it, and remember, I hated Christianity. I hated the Bible stuff. I thought it was bogus. And um, I'm reading it, and God's working on me while I'm reading it. And I don't know what it was. I just couldn't stop reading. I'm reading it, reading it. And I get to Acts, and I'm like, that part where it says, what must I do to be saved? And I'm like, I want this. I believe everything that's just said about you, Jesus, and, I want, and he's working on me. Holy Spirit's working on me, man. I can feel it. Something's going on. And and I I didn't fully understand everything, but I knew Jesus came here. He died for my sins. And it said, what must I do to be saved? Um, call on the name of the Lord, and you shall be saved. And I, I, I put my faith and trust in him. And I was, it was like, boom. It was like night and day, bro. Like I felt totally different, like a different person, man. And I felt, I felt happy. I, I, didn't, I didn't get like some people all breaking down crying and stuff. And I've had that happen over the years as a Christian where I've fallen, fallen short and, and, you know, as a Christian and stuff and cried, you know, where, you know, I've, I've done sin and stuff like that. But when he saved me, it was just joy. I didn't, I didn't break down. I wasn't sobbing. I was excited. And I uh, had this this urge to go out and um and because uh, it said in there you know uh, teach the gospel to the every nation all that um, into Mark I think and um, so the next day I went down to Kinko's and I had them print these cards up and and on these cards it said Jesus Christ the utmost authority on salvation and my my plan was to pass them out in Waikiki which I did. Um, being a new Christian at the time, I didn't know, hey, maybe I should put some Bible verses on there. I didn't think of that or nothing. So I, I got the cards. They did it that day. Then the next day after that, they were ready. I went and got them. That evening, I went and started passing these cards out and stuff. And yeah, and then there's a whole other story there where I ran into this demon, devil-possessed, homeless dude um, like an hour into that. And he fully confronted me. And you could tell he was devil-possessed. And he knew scripture, dude that like he knew scripture and he was but he twisted it a lot and I could feel God telling me hey this guy ain't right get out get away from him so um yeah he totally changed me and it's been struggles over the years so I didn't nobody told me about the gospel except God nobody I didn't go to church 
Jesus Christ himself saved me, which is, he does that with everyone, but I didn't have someone share the gospel with me. So I wasn't even looking for Jesus. I actually hated Jesus, hated Christianity at the time. And he, he was sneaky. I say, I say the way that he saved me was sneaky, man. He, he like caught me with that sneaky uh, fish bait hook, hooked me, yeah? Because he knew what I was into and he hooked me and he pulled me in. And um, yeah, that's, that's a short, sort of a short version, quick version of my, my salvation story, how Jesus saved me. So, dude. <laughs> All right, we gotta go over here.